Welcome to a podcast with Boone Pickens and my great friend Amy Weiss. My name is Rich Galen. I'm the Republican, Amy is the Democrat, and you wonder how we can be sitting next to each other if you just watch the cable news channels. But frankly, here in Washington, this what, is what very... What am I? We're not up to you yet. Okay. You own everything. That's where you oh, are. No. The, uh, but this is exactly the kind of thing with that successful campaigns, not, not candidate campaigns, but issue campaigns are built around that we all know where we are on politics. We know the Republicans. We know the Democrats. And I was never partisan in the Pickens plan. Exactly. What we did need, when we got started, we realized that we were shy of really good representation in terms of the press corps in Washington. And Tom Seinhorst looked around to see who might be available to help add to the team. And a guy named Mike McCurry, who was President Clinton's press secretary, recommended Amy Weiss. She's a Democrat. Nobody cared. She came in, completely re-energized the whole operation. And Amy Weiss, why don't you take it from there? Thank you. So I remember the first day we met, Boone, I was a little nervous to meet you. I heard a lot about you. You were a little girl. I remember that. I was a little girl. Yeah. yeah I, was, I was 10 because um, it was eight years ago. And uh, you said to me, why would you want to work for me? You're a Democrat. And I said, you know what, sir? I don't agree with your politics, but I agree with your policies. And it's been an amazing ride ever since. So it's been, it's been it really terrific. And we've had a great friendship. And I have a better friendship with you than I do with Rich. Well, who, well, know, who wouldn't? Of course, who wouldn't? <laughs> <laughs> you but know, one time we were walking around New York, and we finished doing a big taping, and we were walking to lunch, and I said, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? I couldn't figure it out, probably. <laughs> no, you had a really, you, you had it, you knew exactly why. You said you were too young for World War II. When Korea came around, you had children. You're too old for Vietnam, and you felt very strongly that you had a debt to America, and this was your way of at least partially repaying that debt. There was another part to that story. And yes, and I thought there'd be a time that the Lord would give me a mission to fill. And this was that mission that I'll get everything behind me. World War II, uh, the Korean War, and Vietnam. I'll get them all out of the way right here. And, but I, I'm always trying to get something out of the way that needs to be filled. My mother, she said uh, that uh, when, she said, son, said, when you got married, you had been in the Methodist church. Your grandfather was a Methodist preacher and said, you, uh, you then joined the Presbyterian church. Your wife was a Presbyterian, close enough. So just go ahead, President. And uh, it's, she said, you need to switch back to the Methodist Church. Okay, what did I do? Last week, <laughs> I put my letter in at the first uh, Methodist Church in Dallas and went back and I got that behind me. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice church, I've been in it. Yeah, <laughs> It's a great church, in fact. You know, we also, one of the things that we also remember from the road uh, was when you would do college campuses, and again, these were thousands of people would show up at these, at these town hall events, and especially at college campuses, it'd always be one professor who would stand up and say, that's all wrong, you don't understand about, what about That the was my cousin. <laughs> what about the methane? What about on and on and on? And you, you were very good about this. You didn't get your dander up. You didn't. You'd let him speak, and then you would say, "Okay, you've heard my plan. What's your plan?" And of course, he didn't have a plan. And he's just standing there and look back. And, and so you said, "Okay, so your plan is the status quo. When you have a plan, come back and we'll talk about it." And the audience would applaud and carry on. But you, you were very good about not. You didn't berate them. You allowed them to have their say. But you knew what you were talking about, and you weren't going to... Oh, back listen, back. I knew the subject. Yeah. I did know the subject. Well, when I started with you, the only thing I knew about all oil and gas was how much it cost to fill my tank, and it was a lot back in those days. There were a lot of people. Uh, that's all they knew yeah. was what it cost to fill up the car. But we learned but a you, lot of Yeah, we days. learned a lot, and you were always ahead of your time. I mean, when we started the plan, oil was at, what, 40? 140. 140. And I mean... Gas was at $13. 
So you were way ahead of your time. And, and we, you know, we launched it as DC got even more partisan than ever. And you really wanted to build a bipartisan plan, um, which you did. I mean, think about your meeting with Senator John Kerry and how amazing that was. I mean, what was that you're like? Dumb out when I'm talking about like building the plan and then you know reaching out to to Democrats and reaching out to Republicans. But, but you're talking about when we met and we're on television together mm -hmm. and everything. Yeah, okay. Well, I went back and watched. Um, you were on the Daily Show with John Stewart once, and I went back and watched it the other day. <laughs> and you know, I think I'm not sure what they planned when when they booked you, but I think they because you were a Republican and I think they were perfectly happy to make fun of you. And you were so strong, and you were so honest, and you were so open about it. And you kept saying, I'm for anything American. And John Stewart says, what about mayonnaise? And you said, right. and he said, if it's made in America, I'm for it. And he said, <laughs> he, he said, said I'm, I'll go to Washington with said, you. He said, I'm going to stand up and take this audience out that door, and we're going to go to Washington with you. <laughs> That's right. It was great. It still makes the hair on my arm stand up. We drew a crowd, and they believed us. And I don't know... You give me more credit for how many people believed, but I envision by now we would ha we would be over all heavy duty trucks would be on natural gas. Well, it's coming What's your happening? way. It's just taking a little longer than you hoped. You're again ahead of your time. <laughs> I, I, I better hurry on this one. <laughs> well, that was another thing you said when you did a TED but talk. But I've got FedEx. I've got AT and T. UPS. UPS. Now, UPS. I've got a bunch of big ones with me right right and you worked it every Walmart. day I mean it was it was no smoke Jay was right when he said he never thought he'd have trouble keeping up with an 80 something year old man but we all did you, you had us all running yeah, I was gonna say you were you know probably working out at 630 this morning well you know Rich and I were I, I had a trainer <laughs> barely awake. there at 630 this morning but I checked the price of oil because my guy comes in at the office at 6 and has all all the data the market uh, right there before him, and I, and I got that first, and then I got I did the treadmill. Well, when Tom started this thing, it was and the, going back to the way we began this this particular in, in, uh, installment, uh, Tom was like Mickey Rooney in a in a in a in a movie with Judy Garland walking down the street. Let's do a show, and people just couldn't wait to get on board, and and we built this enormous team, this terrific team, this team that got along. And to this minute, I can't remember a time when any of us had a crossword with each other. Right. But the central character, we had a, the central character was T. Boone Pickens. No, I, but what we had, we had a, a legitimate idea. Yeah. And it that was, was, it's cleaner, it's cheaper. And it, it's ours. It's ours. Right. I said, if I can't sell that, I said, it's not much of a salesman. That, when I made that remark in 1988, hey, listen. I thought I'd have it sold in three years. Well, the Pickens plan has been a great experience. I don't know that it'll ever be duplicated. People will try to emulate it because they'll see how successful it can be if you just put aside your personal your personal politics and right. focus on the mission, and you let us through that. And Thank we you. did. We focused on the mission. We, we did. We were on the road a lot in the early days. As Tom said, when, when he was with you in one of these, we put it together like a presidential campaign. So... It was like a presidential campaign. It was on the road every day, going to a different place, and and kind of going in and going. Now people would jump on and off, you know, over the course of the week. But we were all back in uh, Dallas on on Thursday night or Friday morning, so that everybody could get home and and you could you could get out to the ranch or out to California. And and that's another thing that that you get into when you're when you're on one of these projects, is that. When, you, when you've been around it long enough, any, the early days of a project like this is, I might have an idea and you might say, well, that's, you, that's not your idea to have. That's my role, or I might do that. But we were, we were together so much and you were so eager to get this thing sold that there was no such thing as somebody having an idea yeah. that didn't belong to them. If you had a good idea, throw it in the pot. If we could make it work, we did it. And, and you could move on a dime. I mean, we, you'd be walking up to the stage and somebody would whisper something in your ear and the first thing you know, it's, you, you did five <laughs> minutes on it. <laughs> they, well, I don't, I'm not sure I'm that quick now. Well, well you're quicker. You, still, you're, even not quick as that, you're still quicker than the most of us. <laughs> the average bear. And, you know, with, 
with having this bipartisan team, it was always so great because you could always bounce ideas off of each other, where somebody would have an idea and we'd say, okay, this is how you cut it for the Democrats, here's how you cut it for the Republicans. You know, Rich would reach out to his his side of the aisle, I'd reach out to my side of the aisle. We had all these different ta talents within the- I never remember though, anybody saying, this is the way you cut it for the Democrats, or this way, if you came up with an idea, you didn't have to say that. Right. It, it was acceptable. Right. I mean, an idea that worked, that's what we're looking for. Exactly. Yeah. And when you, when you would go, when you, on those occasions when you'd work the, the House or the Senate here in Capitol Hill, I mean, it was like, um, you were like the Pied Popper. Pied Popper, you're like Bono walking through the aisles. People would just kind of pick, <laughs> poke their heads out of the aisles. Oh, no, you're, you're trying to make me feel good. There's boon You're trying to make me feel good. No, it's true. One time we, we had to go from the Senate office building. You were going to have lunch in the senator's dining room. And this is after they'd clamped down pretty pretty heavily oh, on security. I remember, I remember the story. And they, couldn't, <laughs> they weren't going to let you on the subway. And they, the guards knew me because I'd worked for Kay Bailey Hutchison. <laughs> so I said, come on, we're just going to go here. And, and then we got to the other side, and, and you said, and you turned to me and said, "So now, what are you doing?" And I said, "My job was to get you from there to here. I'm leaving." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember. I remember. <laughs> Kay Bailey was from Texas. Yes, she's from yeah, Dallas, she's Texas. She's very active and very good looking. Doing, doing yeah. very well. Just like she was when she was in the Senate. Well, when I was working for her, somebody, a friend of mine, was leaving the the Energy Department, and was thinking about coming to Dallas to work for the. Pickens plan, and I just happened to say, "We know who's who's. That's great. Who's this? When all the ads, sixty million dollars worth of ads, were on the air." And I said, "Who's running that?" And they said, "Well, a guy named Seinhorst, Tom Seinhorst." I said, "No kidding." So I just called Tom, and I said, "I just talked to so and so, and he said he might be coming on board." I want to tell you, I just think that this Pickens plan deal is one of the best things I've ever seen. He said, "I think I need a writer, and I think it's going to be you." <laughs> that was it. Uh, I, I caught up with you guys at the, the Republican National Convention on September 1st, and I've been here ever since. Hey, it, uh, you know, I went to the Democrat convention. Right. That year. <laughs> and wasn't it in Las Vegas? Or it was Reno? in Denver. 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 Oh, Denver. That's right. It was Denver. I remember distinctly being there. <laughs> and how was it? What, what's the one memory you have of the convention and how different it was in the Republican convention. I bumped into John Kerry there. <laughs> <laughs> how did that go? Uh, he wasn't too friendly. <laughs> he, he was pretty cool. But then you had your meeting with him in the Capitol on that snowy day, and yeah, that went well. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was. He did because he wanted me to do something for him. Right. <laughs> but then you had a press conference and announced, you know, that he was coming out for the Pickens plan. So that was that was big. You bring all sides together. Yeah for great policy. Well, whenever so. you get it in your head again that you want to do something for America, I hope you'll call us. I, you know, I, I think I better hurry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what I started saying about the TED Talk, and we'll finish up with this. You did a TED Talk, and you kept talking about natural gas being a bridge fuel, and somebody kept asking a, a bridge to where, and you looked out at the audience and said, that's not my problem, that's your problem. <laughs> so that's everybody else's well, problem. I said it. At uh, that time, it'll be for years. That's right. Yeah. Anyway, it's been, a, it's been just the best thing I've ever gotten to do is work with you and work with Me the team. Me too. Thank you Thank for Thank you for us. everything. I can say the same thing. Thank okay. You. It's been great.